TreeFrog, we are a, a French, as you can hear, a cell therapy company. And we aim at uh, breaking the glass ceiling of mass cell production of uh, human cells. So we are a relatively uh, small company, uh, 120 people based uh, in uh, Bordeaux. We also have a lab uh, in Boston, and uh, we are building a presence in Kobe in Japan to be close to our partners. Uh, we were uh, uh, incorporated in 2018, so uh, like uh, previous companies. Uh, we are still preclinical, and uh, we raised uh, $75 million in, in, in 2021 to do two things. Uh, one was to uh, progress our pipeline of internal products, uh, in particular our lead program in Parkinson's. I will uh, show you some data. But also uh, to mature our technology, and we are now ready with a, a DMP uh, technology to, um, to do what we have to do. I'm going to show you the technology we have. Three key messages today. Uh, first of all, with our technology, we believe we can make cells that are unique, that have unique features in terms of maturity, in terms of, uh, let's say, um, functionality, just by the sake of the technology. Second thing is that uh, even though we think we have solved the problem of scaling the production of human cells, we also bring uh, something on the quality side. And I will share with you some data on that. But uh, being biomimetic with our approach, uh, we uh, have uh, acknowledged uh, a very high uh, quality uh, of cells uh, through the manufacturing process. And last but not least, uh, I will show you an example of what we do in Parkinson's. But at Preclinical stage, we are already manufacturing at the scale that will be needed for commercial stage. So it gives you a sense of the strength of the technology, but also the affordability of the technology. So we will be uh, hopefully presenting a dossier in which the CMC dossier will be the same today that it will be when we will commercialize, if we commercialize the product at some point. So what is the technology? The idea is to have a biomimetic environment to grow stem cells. So here is a cartoon of uh, the technology. So on the left, what you see is just a, a reminder of what's happening in the you know, real body. Uh, you know, when the, the, the first cells start to, uh, to uh, uh, divide, uh, they self-organize into uh, uh, a shape where you have a lumen inside and the basal uh, uh, size of the side of the, of the cell is facing the, uh, the outside. In our technology, what we do is very simple. We encapsulate cells into a very thin layer of alginate, um, and we protect the cells from the bioreactor. Bio so uh, what we uh, saw is that when you do that with stem cells, uh, like in this picture, they self-organize into this natural shape of, uh, with a lumen inside and a basal uh, surface on the outside. So why? So why is it, why is it so, uh, so useful? First of all, the cells, they are in this capsule. So they see the capsule. And everything between the capsule and the outside world is through diffusion, through the alginate. So that means that for the cells, being in five microliters or in five liters is the same. And that gives you a sense of the scalability of the technology. Once the cells are encapsulate, you can put them in the bioreactor you want. Second thing which is important, the alginate is porous, and you can get almost anything through the alginate, um, macromolecules, uh, small molecules, gas. So what you have to manage is the physical parameters of the bioreactor, and you don't have to care about the biology because the, the, the cells take care of themselves. So, so in, in, in more details, uh, on the left here you see so our technology, which is to have cells in a capsule in a bioreactor. And why, why is that different from other techniques or our other approaches? First of all, when you grow cells on the plastic dish, like on 2D on, uh, on the left, you see that in fact the cells are growing inside out. The basal part of the cells are touching the plastic, and in fact it's the inner part, that, the, you know, the, 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 what should be the lumen of the cells, the ap apical part of the cells, which is facing the media. So every day you're rinsing the, the apical part of the cells, so where cells are communicating to each other. So it's not really good. And that's also, uh, we think, why you see a lot of cell death and a lot of cell selection for genomic abnormalities in 2D. 
An alternative to that is aggregate, is to grow in, uh, in 3D uh, in bioreactors. But there, there is a sheer stress. You know, the larger the bioreactor, the more energy you have to put in to, to just you know, uh, uh, get uh, a good diffusion of the uh, <coughs> sorry, um, factors. And that's what we protect with the, the alginate shell. So at the end of the day, what you see is that we, we, again, those are just numbers, we see a very high productivity in terms of cell division, not because we are doing anything to the cells, but just because they are not dying, they are in good health. Uh, we also, as I said, uh, we have uh, acknowledged also a very strong genomic stability of the cells, which is important, and the scalability, as I said. So let's show you some, some data here. So here in the middle, you have a, uh, you know, a, a graph showing uh, the same cell line uh, manufactured in 30 ml up to 10 liter uh, bioreactors. So, and you see that we'll, here we're looking at the amplification factor, so just uh, cell division. And you see that in fact, the higher we go in volume, the better it is for the cells. But the reason is that because the higher we go in volume, the better we control the physical parameters of the bioreactors. But that's just that. But basically what we, can, what we can do here is that we can scale up and scale down. What we do at 10 ml or 30 ml is predictive of what we will see in large bioreactors. So that's where scalability also uh, for us uh, is, a, is a, a very uh, a different uh, uh, approach um, in terms of manufacturing. You see also viability, 98% of viability. And when cells die, they stay in the capsules. So if they die, we see them. So that means that, again, nothing magic. It's just the cells, you know, they, they, they just take care of themselves. So on the left, you have some images, so it's not easy to see because it's a bit small, but uh, on the, the top left, you have this GMP encapsulator that we have uh, built over the years. So GMP means uh, it's completely closed system, it's single use, it's automated. Um, the, the slight uh, uh, round uh, on the top, so it's not moving, but it's supposed to be a movie, but uh, not on, on PowerPoint, but you, see, you would see that we can generate more than a thousand capsules per second uh, in our uh, device. So that means that, you know, again, uh, working on uh, how to, uh, to break this glass ceiling of mass production. And again, on the, on the, at the bottom, those are supposed to be movies, but uh, because we're using pitch and not uh, PowerPoint usually, so I'm very sorry for that, it's not animated there. But you would see the cells growing in the capsule, so they're growing like a, you know, like a cyst, so it's like a balloon. They are, growing uh, like that. And at the bottom, what you would see is that we can remove the capsule easily because alginate is not a polymer, it's a, it's a nitrogel. So if you remove the calcium from the media, in a few seconds, you remove the alginate, you can rinse it away, and then you can implant cells, not cells in a capsule, into uh, your organ. So, okay, that would be uh, very nice, but what do we do with that? So we tried almost every uh, protocol that exists uh, in, the, in the field, and everything seems to work in the capsule. So here you have some uh, examples where uh, we have developed uh, in-house or with partners uh, different cell types. Um, as you can see, there are many collaborations that, we, uh, that are undisclosed, so uh, because of our research collaboration. Um, but recently, we made an inroad in oncology where we uh, uh, announced uh, uh, first a research agreement with Umoja, uh, a Seattle-based company on uh, uh, iPSC-induced NK cells. And recently, we announced a deal with uh, a research deal with Gaia, a Japanese company. And that's a different approach. So everything I've, I've shown you was about encapsulating iPSCs and differentiating them in the capsule. Oh yeah, because I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to say that, that when the cells are encapsulated, you can start differentiation in the capsule. So at the end of the day, you obtain millions or billions of micro tissues of, uh, of the, the organ of interest. But uh, recently, we started to also encapsulate mature cells. So you see at the bottom of this slide in red, uh, T cells, NK cells, uh, MSCs, to see how those cells would react being encapsulated in a, in a biomimetic microenvironment. And that's, uh, you know, following this work, uh, we uh, started this uh, research collaboration with Gaia. Gaia is, uh, is working on a specific subtype of NK, NK cells, uh, and, uh, and we are helping them uh, amplifying those uh, NK cells by, while uh, keeping uh, the phenotype. So as you see, there's a broad range of usage of our technology. So uh, our internal focus uh, is on the, uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, 
uh, being in a position to re-implant uh, dopaminergic neurons in the brain of patients. And here our approach is unique also because we are the only company in the world to be able to implant neurons and not progenitors. So our competition is working on progenitors because those are single cells, easy to handle, and that you can uh, you know, uh, easy, uh, easily, or easily, uh, I should not say easily, but that you can handle and, uh, and manufacture. In our case, because we can grow the cells and keep the cells in a capsule for a sufficient amount of time, we can differentiate them into neurons and obtain what you see here on the left, which is a, a ball of uh, midbrain cells in which you have neurons. Um, and we believe that with this approach, we'll bring um, you know, uh, safety to the patient because we'll bring a product that is mature and we'll not hope for the fate of the cells to become what they're supposed to become in the brain of the, of the patient. And also what we have seen is that the survival of, the, of those 3D objects is much better than single cells. So we also believe that we will have a better control of the dose uh, in the patient. Also in terms of manufacturing, as I said in the introduction, we are already manufacturing at commercial scale. So that, you know, just to give you a, a sense of, of, of the, the, what we do, and manufacturing means we encapsulate IPSCs and we wait for 24 days and we get the product out of it. So there is no handling, nothing is done by hand. Everything is a closed system in barrel reactors. And it works, so those are just examples. So uh, you know, I, I was not uh, planning to, to show you all the slides, but just, just to show that it works. So when you inject, because there's been questions over the past if it would work to implant, implant directly neurons in the brain and not progenitors, it works, it works fine. So you see here on the left, uh, the classical test uh, on rats, uh, uh, Amy Parkinsonian rats, where you know, they, they turn around when you stimulate them and you will re-implant uh, neurons in, 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 the, in the damaged part of the brain and they stop turning around. So here you have an example of what has been done with a fresh product and what has been done with a cryopreserved product. So we, we now have what we think is a pharmac pharmac pharmacological product. And on the, on the, in the middle, uh, it's the uh, injection. Uh, you see the injection, uh, uh, sorry, the, the graft after injection. So after uh, five months uh, in the rat brain. And you see that uh, because we inject micro tissues, they, they stay where they're supposed to stay. And the, the impact on the overall structure of the brain is really uh, limited. So here uh, we calculated something like 5% of the striatum. And uh, I'll let you, uh, uh, you know, go to, to the competition to see uh, the impact of implanting not mature cells, but um, um, progenitors, but it's much more diffused. So we think we also have a safer uh, uh, implant. So we're ready to go to phase one. Uh, now we need to uh, finish the uh, TOC studies uh, in, uh, in rats and monkeys and uh, hope to be, uh, to be uh, ready for phase one uh, in two years from now. Still working on it. So over the last, uh, so we are finishing the first cycle of investment where we needed to uh, mature the technology to show uh, you know, some exam use cases of what we could do uh, with this technology. So uh, this is done. And now we're entering a new uh, cycle uh, of uh, investment where we want to expand the usage of system, system being the name of the technology, uh, to uh, uh, new uh, indications. Uh, we also are exploring uh, things we could do in the capsule, so what we call in capsulo, for instance, gene editing in capsulo. And, uh, and try to, uh, to, to get uh, even more uh, uh, value uh, into the product uh, with, the, with our approach. Uh, as I said, we want to enter the clinic, so with our uh, main product, but also with a, a, a partner uh, product. And uh, uh, so the, the platform now is, uh, is, is ready for partnering, so we are very active uh, now trying different uh, protocols and different systems to see how uh, we can bring value uh, to, uh, to the field. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.